like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. The elephant in the room is this. Why do black men like big butts? And is that even true? Or is it just another wrong racial stereotype? They're questions that have launched a thousand rap lyrics and even a few scientific studies. Hey, I'm Ken LaCourt. Here, I try to give you a fair and balanced look at geopolitical issues, awkward questions around race and gender, our uncomfortable history, and of course, the female backside. So I dug in to try to figure it out. And what I found surprised me. It goes way deeper than pop culture or Instagram likes. We'll look into the evolutionary roots of why men find certain shapes attractive, the contrasting beauty standards between African and Europeans, and how they've changed over time, but persisted in African American culture. And let me get my own biases out of the way first. For all my life, I've been a small butt guy. So I was fascinated at how millions of men came to the opposite conclusion. But first, let's make sure that question is fair. Do black men, in fact, love big butts more than others? And can I generalize about an entire race's preferences? Actually, yes, I can, especially when there's solid science backing it up. And on this, the science is clear. Black men love big butts, and it's not even debatable. Now, I know some of you are gonna think guys of all races like big butts, and that's true, but there's a spectrum of preferences within every group. And the data consistently shows that race plays a significant role in backside desires. Let's start with some data. A study by the University of Texas found that African-American men are twice as likely to prefer a large rear compared to their white counterparts. But it's not just a black and white issue. The study also found that Latino men share this preference, but to a lesser degree than the African-American men. And dating site statistics back this up as well. When researchers analyzed the body type preferences selected by users on popular dating platforms, they found clear differences between racial groups. Again, African-American men were far more likely to search for thicker, curvier body types compared to white men. And interestingly, it's not just about the size of the prize. It turns out that there's an ideal angle of the dangle. The University of Texas study found that men overwhelmingly preferred a 45 degree curve at the lower spine. This magic number held true across all racers, but researchers noticed that the desired degree of curvature was most exaggerated among African-American men. But wait, there's more. It's not just about the back, it's about the waist to hip ratio to be precise. Studies show that the preferred ratio differs significantly by race. African American men tend to prefer a more extreme contrast between a small waist and large hips, while white men generally prefer a more moderate difference. So why is this the case? How do these different beauty standards develop? Is it nature or nurture that's shaping these preferences? Specifically, why did African American beauty standards evolve to prefer curvier figures in the first place? Now, at its base level, there are biological and environmental factors at play. In historical Africa, a bigger body made a lot of evolutionary sense. The continent's harsh climate and inconsistent food supplies meant that some extra body fat could literally be the difference between life and death during lean times. It meant strength. It meant health. Larger bodies were also better equipped to handle the physical demands of manual labor and childbearing, essential for survival. In an environment where resources were scarce, curves became a visible marker of health, wealth, and fertility. Now here's where it gets less clear. Was it really men choosing fuller women over skinnier ones? Or is it that given the environment, those that thrived had those bodies? I mean, the things that we see are the things that we covet, and if that's what you saw, that's what you're gonna love. Now, those traits aren't unique to Africa, of course. Throughout history and across many cultures, fullness has been linked to fertility and vitality. But in the context of African environments, these biological signals seem to take on an especially important role. As African societies developed, the evolutionary preferences became encoded into cultural beauty standards. Artwork from across the continent celebrated the fuller female form, from ancient rock art to traditional sculptures. When Europeans arrived with their own beauty standards, many African cultures actively resisted these impositions. Maintaining traditional aesthetics became a form of cultural preservation and identity in the face of oppression. Now fast forward to today, and we can see how these deep-rooted preferences continue to shape beauty standards in the African-American communities. Cultural artwork, from jazz album covers to hip-hop music videos, has consistently celebrated curvier body types. There's also been a strong community emphasis on resisting mainstream beauty standards that are often rooted in European ideals. For many, embracing fuller figures is a way of kind of honoring their cultural heritage and identity. So maybe the preference for larger body types among black men isn't just a superficial trend, but a result of thousands of years of evolutionary adaptions and cultural traditions. But what about white preferences? While African beauty standards remain relatively stable, 
European ideals took a wild ride. Back in the day, Europeans like those big booties too. Renaissance paintings are full of voluptuous women, ample curves. Rubens, the 17th century Flemish painter, was so famous for his full-figured nudes that we still use the term Rubenesque to describe them today. But then something happened. Europe industrialized. And with it came a seismic shift in beauty standards. The Industrial Revolution wasn't just about factories and steam engines. It also changed food production, making calories cheaper and more abundant than ever before. Suddenly, being plump wasn't a sign of wealth anymore. Anyone could do it. So the upper classes needed a new way to distinguish themselves. Enter the corset. Nothing says, I don't need to work for a living, like a waist that you can't breathe in. Thinness became a new status symbol. The Victorian era doubled down on the trend. They associated thinness with moral purity and self-control. Bigger women, they were seen as lazy and lacking willpower. Talk about a 180 degree turn. Fast forward to the 20th century and things get even more intense. The rise of mass media, magazines, movies, TV, started beaming these new ideals into every home. Fashion magazines pushed increasingly thin models. Hollywood starlets got skinnier. By the 1960s, we had Twiggy, literally named after a twig, as a top beauty icon. But here's the kicker. While European standards were changing, African beauty ideals stayed relatively stable. I mean, many African societies industrialized more slowly. Some still haven't. So the pressures that shifted European ideals weren't as intense. But come back to America for a second. I mean, black Americans live in an industrialized society too. Why haven't their preferences changed? And it's a good question. And it's because African-American culture developed its own unique identity. During slavery, black Americans created a distinct counterculture. Rejecting white standards became a form of resistance and strong oral traditions and tight-knit communities kept cultural preferences strong even as the broader society changed around them. And at the same time, white America basically rejected them. Forced segregation created parallel societies with different values. It limited the influence of mainstream media and strengthened the internal community bonds. For blacks, the concept of America's melting pot happened a lot more slowly. Even as black Americans gained more access to mainstream culture, there was often a strong pushback against whitewashing beauty standards. The Black is Beautiful movement of the 1960s is a great example. Today, we're seeing some interesting convergences. Mainstream beauty standards are becoming more inclusive of curvier figures. Now, is this a genuine appreciation or is it marketing exploitation? Or is that all intermixed? I don't know. So the next time you see a Renaissance painting or a modern fashion magazine, remember beauty standards aren't set in stone. They're as changeable as the societies that create them. Hey, just a reminder that if I mess up any facts here, as always, I'll address it in a pinned comment below. But when you think about it, even this video is coming at things from a European standpoint. I mean, from an African point of view, the question isn't what I posed, but instead, why do white guys like small butts? And that hits at something deeper. For centuries, European standards dominated global beauty. They owned the magazines, they controlled the fashion houses, they ran the movie studios. They got to tell everyone else what beautiful meant. But nature's a stubborn thing. Those African preferences that developed over thousands of years weren't just random choices, they were rooted in biology. But recently, something's changed. Now, maybe it was the internet democratizing beauty standards, maybe it was the rise of hip hop culture, but what's really going on is more interesting than just preferences. We're watching centuries of parallel beauty standards finally collide. Now, some say it's cultural appropriation, others call it progress, but here's what they're missing. African American beauty standards didn't just survive, in some ways they're winning the cultural war. Kim Kardashian helped build an empire by copying black beauty ideals. So it's certainly possible that Sir Mix-a-Lot was a philosopher ahead of his time. I find that interesting, but not interesting enough to change the team I'm on. So look, this video about body preferences is pretty lighthearted, but in recent years, we've seen the body positivity movement turn into something that's deadly toxic. Our media and our society went from trying to be nice to overweight people to something that celebrated and encouraged radically dangerous lifestyles. It's like some people lost their minds. I dug into the ugly underside of that and saw that it was driven by politics and profit. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm active in the comments below and hope that if you find this interesting, you'll join me again. Take care.